There's some literature that now helps us understand why cardio is less effective for fat loss when you are overweight. Now, let me ask you something. This is kind of interesting. Have you ever met someone that's maybe, I don't know, lean, but not super lean, maybe like 12% body fat, and they want to get into single digits, and it seems like it's very easy for them? Like, but then you look at someone that's maybe 40% body fat, it's monumentally more difficult for them to get from 40% to 35% than a lot of times it is for people to get from, say, 15% to 10%, or even 12% down to 7%. Now, it's gonna be different for different people, but generally speaking, when I talk to people, that is the case. And there's this very important thing that's called energy compensation, and there's relatively newer literature now that explains why this happens. It's pretty, it's, it's actually, it sounds discouraging at first, but I promise you it's actually not. It's discouraging if you prefer cardio to be your way of losing fat, which I like cardio, and I've done, done a lot of videos talking about how cardio is great for burning fat. Don't get me wrong. But check this out. There is a study that was published in Current Biology. It took a look at 1,754 people from various data sets. Okay, what they found is that generally speaking, with exercise, there was what is called a 28% energy compensation effect. So what this means is that when someone exercises, they're actually only really burning about 72% of the calories that they think they're burning because there's an energy compensation. Now, I'll explain what that means in a moment. But basically, for every 100 calories that the treadmill says you burn, or even a very accurate device, or even what a metabolic chamber would say, it's really, more than likely, only like 72 calories. Part of this is a short-term thing. Part of it is more long-term, because energy compensation basically makes it so that you end up burning less calories from your exercise as a way to protect you so that you don't burn as much or so you can burn more through your daily activity. Because if everything moved linearly, for example, if you were to exercise, it doesn't mean that your exercise is going to proportionally increase your energy expenditure in accordance with your total energy expenditure. I know that sounds complicated. Let me explain what that means. If you exercise and you burn 500 calories, it doesn't necessarily mean that it's increasing your energy expenditure for the whole day 500 calories. I know that's hard to believe, but there's other factors at play. There's the efficiency, there's the energy compensation, there's the constrained energy theory. All of this doesn't matter until I tell you this point. People that are overweight or have higher amounts of fat on them have a higher energy compensation than those that are leaner. So if someone has a large amount of body fat on them, they might compensate even more energy when they exercise. So if they were to go out and do cardio, maybe they're only burning 60 calories for every 100 calories they're burning because the energy compensation is greater in overweight people. The less overweight or over fat someone is, the less overall sort of compensation they have. The best way that I can kind of relate this in some ways is sort of like nutrition. Even though they have the same calories, not all foods are equal, right? If you were to eat 200 calories from a pixie stick or 200 calories from say like steak, well, sure, there's a nutrient situation there, but one is also more readily available one has to be digested, has to have a lot of thermic effect that goes into just utilizing it. Another example is the rate of digestion, like having a liquefied meal, like a smoothie, is way more energetically available than chewing on a steak or some ground beef, right? So for overweight people, you need to leverage what is best for you. And even if you're not super overweight, if you're over 20% body fat, this is going to be very relevant for you. You are significantly better off by increasing your daily just activity with household tasks and with doing regular things through your non-exercise activity thermogenesis. I know 
I sound like a crook saying that. I am telling you now that exercise is important and you should absolutely, positively, 100% still exercise. But the more overweight you are, the more you may want to just increase your daily activities. And as the weight comes off, then you start to change the ratio of exercise to non-exercise activity thermogenesis, right? So for me, for example, when I was very overweight before, it would have been ideal for me to do maybe 30 minutes of cardio and then just move more throughout the day. Just stop being so damn sedentary, right? Move a lot and do things like fidget, take the stairs once or twice a day, things like that. And then as I started to lose weight, then I can increase the cardio a little more, ideally not decrease my NEAT, but if my NEAT decreases, which it naturally will, that's fine because I am in a less energy compensation state. So the more overweight you are, the more you should leverage your NEAT. The more in shape you are, the more you have flexibility to leverage your exercise. Now with nutrition, I think it comes a lot down to the same kinds of concepts. It's just like looking at someone that is metabolically healthy and active they can typically eat carbohydrates without a problem. So they shout from the rooftops all over Instagram, carbs are fine, 500 grams of carbs today and look at me, okay? But then you've got, I'll just use me as an example, former me 12 years ago at 300 pounds being like, I eat a carb and I gain a bunch of weight. Well, I was also diabetic. I was also very unhealthy and metabolically damaged. It's not the same. My point in saying that is, as you get leaner, you can have those carbohydrates more. And I'm not saying you can't have them now, but I'm saying it becomes much more important for you when you're overweight to prioritize the protein piece because you get the thermic effect and you compensate your calories there so you're not getting as much of the carbs in. For what it's worth, if you like steaks, if you like ground beef, if you like things like that, ground bison, I went ahead, I put a link for one of our sponsors down below. If you've gotten some value out of my videos, a great way for you to support this channel is to support our sponsors. And this is probably one of the most delicious ways to support this channel is checking out ButcherBox. So that link down below is a special link, shows you some of the cuts that I would choose. They've got grass-fed, grass-finished beef. They've got chicken, they've got chicken thighs, they've got chicken wings, they've got sea bass. They've got all kinds of different fish options and scallops and whatnot. They've got bacon. Their ground bison is probably my favorite ground bison that I've ever had. And it's all delivered to your doorstep. But the best thing is, it tastes amazing. I think you will agree when you try it. It's some of the best tasting beef, especially the ground beef and especially the New Yorks. Those are just the best. So that link is in the top line of the description. Again, appreciate your support. I appreciate ButcherBox's support. So if you're getting value out of this content, best thing you could do is maybe help us out to help you out to get some good quality meat. So the cool thing is, is that since non-exercise activity thermogenesis is usually low intensity work anyway, eating a higher protein diet along with that only works in your favor, right? Because why would you want to add a lot of carbohydrates into the mix if you're not really exercising a whole lot? I'm not saying carbs are bad, but I am saying that carbs are most noted in the scientific literature as being like an ergogenic aid. There is no denying that carbohydrates will help you perform better and harder and faster in many cases. Okay, especially in that top like 10% of your energy, right? So I'm not saying that, okay? There's essential fats, there's essential proteins like amino acids. There's no such thing as an essential carbohydrate. Our body can make carbohydrates. Again, I'm not telling you to cut out carbohydrates. I am saying when you are overweight, if you prioritize and let the lion's share of your diet be protein followed by veggies, followed by maybe some fats, and then followed by trace amounts of whatever carbs you wanna have come in for maybe some sweet potatoes. I've done videos on what kind of carbs you should probably eat. And in that block, eating like that, focus less on the exercise and more on movement throughout the day, letting the movement and the diet do the work, okay? As the body fat comes off, you're going to have less energy compensation, so it's more worthwhile for you to exercise because you're getting more juice for the squeeze, right? Or you're getting the right amount of juice with the squeeze, I should say. 
So with that, you can all of a sudden start adding carbohydrates in because now you're exercising and the intensity warrants some carbohydrates. So you see how things start to balance, right? There's sort of this shift that happens, non-exercise activity thermogenesis, higher protein, lower carbohydrate, slightly shift, a little more exercise, maybe a little more carbohydrates, maybe a little less fats, ideally the same amount of protein. So the bottom line is, yes, your lean friend does have it easier. He can lose fat faster than you because he's squeaking out more calories per minute of exercise than you are if you're overweight. But you can get there too. I'll see you tomorrow.